Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. I am praying that you are staying warm and blessed, not stressed, and that you are well, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Amen. Isn't it the most wonderful thing to hear, It Is Well With My Soul? That is one of my favorite songs. I remember growing up with singing that song, and it just blessed my soul. So I pray it is well with your soul, amen. Hey, Kathy Forbes, God bless you. Thank you for joining in, good morning. And as you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. I'm gonna go over something physical for your physical health. And I'm also, and also it's actually in concert with the bittersweet taste test that I have in my book. And I've got the new hard copy right here it is beautiful, oh my gosh. If you want this awesome book and hard copy, it is available. Look at how awesome it is. I just love having the hard co copy. And look at this binding. Isn't that beautiful? It's almost yellow and purple, but it might be purple and white. But isn't that beautiful? Good morning, Susan Sawicki. Good morning, Katie Higgum. Good morning, Donna. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. And I will start back with book coaching this week and get two sessions out. I pray that you all had a most awesome holiday season. Good morning, Linda. God bless you. Good morning, Deborah. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. So the first thing I want to bring you as it relates to your physical health, and I am just a true believer I know that anything that God tells me that I never hear from a person, but straight from God, and it has such a testimony, I have to share that good news. It is just absolutely phenomenal how God has given us so much wisdom, and in that wisdom, He pours it out liberally so that our temple is taken care of, amen? And so, I've got my testimony up from 2016 of when I've got really super sick from the crud on steroids. All right. That's what it was like. Good morning, Sue Gailey. And so in 2016, March 31st, and I've got that testimony up. Good morning, Kathy. And that testimony is this. I was felt like I was hit by a freight train and it was really severely bad. And as I was in Haleyville, Alabama at that time, God spoke to me and he said, Robin, that apple cider vinegar that you have, that is gonna heal you. So take it consistently. And I was drinking it like tea, hot tea. I love tea and tea is good for you. And so I've got the website up and the link up and how I took it, which was I did two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar to a tablespoon a day in a hot cup of water and then I added stevia and I also added honey and lemon at that time and I just drank four cups of it and it just got rid of the infection. We didn't have health insurance at that time and even though my ex-husband is a physician and I am blessed to be able to go to him when necessary, I just didn't want to use antibiotics because antibiotics really are hard on your microbiome. And I try to not use antibiotics because it totally wreaks havoc on your microbiome, which is really your makeup in not only physical health, but also in your mental health. Your microbiome affects your mental status as well as your emotional status and your physical status. And so antibiotics are really, really hard on your microbiome. And I was just determined at that time to not have to depend on antibiotics. And God told me to take the apple cider vinegar and I drank four cups a day. And after just a very, very, very brief period, it just knocked it out. And ever since then, I've been sold on apple cider vinegar with the mother, which means with the pulp. So if you're interested, I have that testimony and the link on my Facebook wall. So go ahead and look at it and look at that wisdom, amen. Good morning, Kim Mitchell. 
And so the other wisdom that I have for you today is 2022, God really wants you to dream big. Now, some of y'all were with me when I started that three years ago. Good morning, Regina. And three years ago, God was having me do the dream large and the dream big and just to dream. And so many people, and you're going to find out in the new journal, which is Just Be, and it's a self-image journal. It's a journal like no other. You've never done a journal like this. There is what I call a method to the madness, which you might think is crazy as you do certain assignments, color pictures, and do things necessary for your self-image, and it's purposeful in order to hit the G-protein coupled receptor. Me too, Regina, I just love Bragg's apple cider vinegar, and to me, it's the best, in my opinion. And so, the G-protein coupled receptor is what you're hitting in your person because that helps in the consecration of the body. When you're consecrating your body, what you're doing without knowing it, and it's all in this book in so many pages, and I talk about the G-protein coupled receptor several times in this particular book, Mindfulness in Mount of Christ, and it literally shows you how deliverance comes to your temple at that particular receptor, and you understand the physiology and the science and the scriptures that unpack the consecration of the body and how it is hit at this particular receptor. So one of the things, and also FYI, just FYI, God gave me the bittersweet taste test, and he gave it to me from Isaiah 7, which is in chapter 6, called Pruning of Mindfulness Amount of Christ, where this bittersweet taste test actually hits the G-protein coupled receptor, and one of the components he gave me for that ancient technique was apple cider vinegar for those that wanted to participate if their doctor approved it. And so, one of the things that I want to talk to you about today, kicking off this new year, is that God wants you to dream big. There's so many times that we limit God, and we don't realize the restraints and constraints of our own self-image where we have need to be pruned, where there is information operative at the receptor level that keeps you bound in that input. And you have to look at it like a computer. And I bring it up at the beginning of the introduction of Just Be, the self-image journal, as I expounded greatly in chapter five of Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, and chapter four, as it relates to the fact that our reality, now get this in your knower, our reality comes from our information, okay? Now, that is just potent. Our reality comes from our information. And I talk about John Archibald Wheeler, the physicist that turned physics upside down, as he came up with the saying, it, I-T, comes from bits. And what he was saying is, it is our reality, and our reality comes from information. Now, he was so bold as to go further as he evolved this philosophy, this mindset, by detailing that information is more important than matter and energy. Now, I want you just to consider this, and this is absolutely scriptural, and you'll see in just a minute. He said, information is more important than matter and energy. And so, if we look at Jesus Christ as the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God presently with God, he, the Word was God himself in the beginning, the Word is information. Jesus is information about who? John 1, 18, Jesus, no man has been in the bosom of the Father except for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and he has come to interpret him. He has come to make him known. And so, Jesus is the information of God the Father. He said to Philip, Philip, 
if you don't believe the works that I do are the Father's works, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you don't believe that, look at the works that I do because the works that I do are not my works. They're the Father's works. And so scripture also says, John 15, 8, that you and I glorify the Father with our works of righteousness, our good fruit. And so fruit is actually a language. And I go into three chapters of explaining the language of fruit in mindfulness, the mind of Christ. And the language of fruit is in the mind and body connection as the two come into reconciliation with truth by the power of Holy Spirit. And so in the supernatural realm, in the invisible realm, we communicate all day long, unknowingly, unconsciously, through the information of fruit. So let's get back to it. Your reality comes from information, okay? So the word created matter. The word created energy. As John Archibald Wheeler refers to, information is more important than matter and energy because matter and energy come from information. So let's look at this in your body. Your reality is based on the information of your subconscious, of your self-image. A lot of people want to think the subconscious is totally up here, and that's not truth as it relates to aging and as you age. And the best analogy is like an oak tree that has deep roots, which I get into that in Rev 22 too that those roots are much deeper and wider than the crown of the tree, which is the circumference, circumference of the longest width around the tree. That's called the crown. And I get into that in my book, Rev 22.2. And so the roots, as it relates to our subconscious, roots are the information of our subconscious that seem in our mind, in our crown. Now think about that. And a lot of people don't get that. And that's why I say it a gazillion times, all these different ways, being redundant and saying it this way, that way, this way, that way on different videos. So you can finally go, oh, that's what it means. Yes. Your subconscious is like the roots of an oak tree that allows the crown, the splendor of the crown to be seen in your mind. In other words, the helmet of salvation, that the helmet of salvation is firmly established by the information in your body. And when you get, when you see the physiology and you understand molecular signaling in your body at the receptor level, you will find out that the intellect of the body is far superior like Einstein to the intellect of the brain and really that the intellect of this brain would be compared to a kidney gardener as it relates to the intellect in the mind uh, in the body which would be like Einstein and I know that this is probably like what over your head but I get into it in great detail and unpack molecular signaling at the receptor level in the body by opening the senses. And you're going to say, Robin, that's new age. No, it's not new age. It's revealed even in Jesus Christ as Messiah in prophecy. And it's laid out not only in the Old Testament, but it's also in the New Testament. And the first time that the senses of the body were distorted was in the Garden of Eden. And so Adam, who was created in the image of Elohim, and life breathed into him that named every animal, all kinds of species that ever has existed. He named it brilliant mind, that mind that knows what the father's thoughts and intentions are. It was all perverted when Eve and he partook of the fruit. And that perverted not the senses on his face, but the sentences in his body. And that's why a lot of people don't have freedom. They're not able to dream big, to dream large. They're constrained because their self-image is in such a ditch, a rut, a bondage. It's double-minded. 
and it causes you to be inept and being able to know God's plans for your life. It is the consecrated body that causes you to know what God's destiny is for your life. And that's what you're going to find in the self-image journal, which I will put, I'm putting out as quickly as possible. It is a lot more involved than I thought it would be, but that's good. That's a good thing. And so one of the things today, ask yourself, where am I being restrained in what God has planned for my life? How do I need to work in concert in being a disciple and being disciplined first with God and then in my life and to do what God has called me to do. It is not difficult. It just requires intensity and commitment. And that's what you don't see a lot of. And that's why the word of God says many are called and few are chosen because few are willing to put in that commitment along with a high level of intensity. And one of the things that I would compare it to is, of course, one of my favorite things, Alabama football. You know, Rich and I don't have a lot of money to do trips and do a lot of stuff that we would like to do. And that's good. That's fine. And so, Alabama football provides that vacational retreat that we would not normally get as much as others do in their lives. And so we've really enjoyed watching Alabama football at seasons. And if there is a football team that has really been consistent at winning championships or going to the championship, Nick Saban with the Alabama football team has been the uh, standard in doing that. And the reason is it's not because they are necessarily the best players in college football, but there's just a program that's really committed and has a certain standard and meets that standard every time. And so as a result, you have those that are chosen as they play to deliver with that intensity and commitment. But think about how many people, how many players don't make it on the field and they leave too early before their time, when if they would have waited two more years, they could have been playing for Alabama football, but they transferred through the transfer portal, which in my opinion, and I told Rich this a long time ago, I said the transfer portal, portal is the worst thing for college football. It is just like the NFL, and that is no fun. And it's really opened itself up to where immature players will transfer because they don't get to play and as a result, they don't learn discipline and commitment and they want it now. And we, the saints, are very much like that. If we're not mature in the love of Christ, we're not gonna let patience have its perfect work. And we're going to be like those college football players. We don't get to play, so we're gonna transfer through the portal. We're gonna go somewhere else where our gift can be used or where we can be seen. And you know what? That is a sign of a lack of maturity. Listen. When I go to places God has me go to and I am not teaching and I am ministering even at some places, but maybe I'm not ministering at these other portions of that meeting, that conference is taking place. Listen, I am not there thinking about myself. I am thinking about what's being delivered from the speaker, the next speaker, the next minister and I delight in it. I'm not looking at, okay, what can I say? Hopefully they'll bring me up. No, I don't look at it that way. Or even when I go visit a church, when God tells me to visit a church, I'm not thinking, oh, call on me. I'm going to say something. I do not do that. In fact, I've had churches call on me and come to me in the pew and put the microphone up to my face and I wouldn't say anything. Or they would come to me continually and they would say, Robin, if you feel led to say something, but just because I happened to be in their congregation that morning, if you feel led to say something, come say something. And I, and, I, and I would say, look, I am not here for that. I am here just to be a church church participant, okay? And I, I think that a lot of saints are looking to display their gift 
instead of taking in the church as a body and delighting in the gifts of the church in other people. And that's the difference between a disciple, someone who's disciplined and who is chosen is they're not looking to be used. They're looking to be a part of the church. And when you have that kind of mindset, you can dream large, you can dream big, and there's no constraints in your person because nothing is comparing you to someone else and you're appreciating the gifts of others. So saints, think about those three things, three things, apple cider vinegar with the mother for your body. <clears throat> and secondly, as it relates to the information that's in your subconscious, and that information is going to show up in what we call emotions. So just check your emotions. And also in those emotions, check your commitment. Are you committed? Are you intense in your commitment just to the Lord and what he's called you to do? Even when it looks crazy, when you are committed you and when you have intensity, you will do, amen, Amy, you will do things you do not want to do, okay? Just like those football players, even though they're prepared, I'm sure they're, you know, they're nervous. I'm sure they've got to be nervous, and especially if they're first-time players and they're on the field, which there's a lot of first-time players this year for the Alabama football team. But I'm sure that there is a nervousness and, you know, I get nervous when God tells me to do things. It is very much like walking on water. And it's things that I never would consider. It's things that stretch me, just like this self-image journal. I've never done a journal before. You would think it'd be easy because I'm always posting on Facebook Live. And it would be easy on Facebook. It'd be easy to copy and paste my posts. That would be easy, okay? I need something that stretches that gift in me. Hey, Lee, good morning. Some, something of God that stretches that gift in me. And, you know, when Rich edits it and says, Robin, you need to look at it this way, this way, this way. And, you know, part of me goes, oh, my goodness. God, I don't know if I can do that. Help me, Jesus. And then I feel like I even have more work and more pressure on me to put this self-image journal out. And then time is of the essence. And I'm just like, just breathe. I'm committed. There's intensity. It's difficult. It's bigger than Robin, but that's okay because I'm committed. That's how you dream big, saints, is you commit in the discipline and you just stay the course. So God bless you. Be excited about 2022 and dream big in Jesus' name.